Action! And welcome back to Bleacher Bum TV. This is episode eight. I am your host, Carl. We got Danny Lance on the ones and twos. We are currently in my dad's garage, and we are here to talk about the Chicago Cubs 2022 season. If you remember last time we talked last week, I was a little down on our starting pitching, and for very good reason. We were going through a terrible stretch. Do you remember the 4 and 14 stretch over 18 days? You remember that 4 and 14? That's tough. That's brutal. I believe I was puking. We were all puking. We're back though, guys. Maybe not, but hear me out. Okay, after that tough stretch, we went on a little West Coast road trip. We went four and two, if you remember. Okay, you're showing that, right? Okay, we went four and two. Then this past week, seven games in a row after West Coast road trip, we went three and four. Do we have any mathematicians out there? What is that? 13 game stretch. Seven and six? Let's keep the math rolling. What's seven divided by 13? Anybody at home? It's 53.84%. What's 53.84% times 162 games? Anybody? 87 and change. So you want to round up to 88, you want to be conservative and round down to 87. I don't give a fuck, guys. What I am telling you is the last two weeks, this team has fulfilled the initial prophecy of being good enough to compete for a wild card spot, and that is after coming back a 4-14 and stretch. I'm selling you guys something here, though. I'm really fucking working here. But I want to be positive. I want to be positive. I don't want to shit on everybody. I want to come in here every week, talk shit about the Cubs. They suck. It's about building momentum. Maybe we get hot. There's four in Cincinnati right now. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, a Friday off day going into, make sure the schedule's up for this week, too. Going into two at the Chicago White Sox. Very light travel. And again, I don't want to go too far back. But a West Coast road trip sucks the fucking life out of you. You got to come home. You got to play seven. Ugh. It's a lot to follow. But if you are following me as I'm explaining the narrative of these guys, there's 162 games. The narrative of going from one series to the next, traveling around the country. This shit fucking matters, guys. And if they can get hot, and I mean hot, go in, sweep the Reds. The Reds stink. Why can't we sweep the Reds? Now, this comes out on Tuesday morning. It's a live studio show. I said that. We're recording this on Tuesday morning. The results of Monday night's game are not yet known. Did I blow the surprise? No. My point is this. We win four in a row. We come out. We can go in. If we steal one from the White Sox, you don't lose all four against the White Sox. Stay positive. And I got to stay positive, and here's why. Some people were talking shit about me because they said, I thought Wilson Contreras shouldn't get extended, and therefore I don't know shit about the Cubs, that I don't have complete mastery of the subject, that in the 10 years that I've been covering the Cubs for Barstool Sports, I've just like just stopped giving a fuck, and I don't even know who plays on this team. I'll tell you, there's a bunch of guys on the bench that are very fucking average right now that aren't doing shit. There's no depth. Jan Gomes, Ortega, Villar. Are, are, are we getting absolutely any production from anybody we've spent money on? No. Nico Horner, everybody says, is great. He's 95 OPS plus adjusted. Uh, and he's injured. It's a tough scene, guys. We are getting good production from Hap. Obviously, Seiya Suzuki, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Wilson Contreras, so we got to come back to Wilson Contreras. I don't want to extend Wilson Contreras. I have to be very clear about this. Some, some people said, do you think the Cubs will extend him? And I said, absolutely not. And that's a qualified professional opinion. Now, a personal opinion is that they shouldn't extend him. He's been in the organization for 14 years, and if you are not committed to making that guy a career Cub, then there's probably a good fucking reason, guys. In my personal opinion, is I'm smart enough to know I don't know everything. But I do know that Jed's smart enough and Theo's smart enough, and if they thought this guy should be a career Cub, they would have made it happen. What do you think of that logic? Pretty logic. Pretty, it's pretty logical logic. Uh, are we still in my dad's garage? Let's stay in my dad's garage for a second. I got one more thing I want to talk about. It's the starting pitching. Obviously, it's been suspect. It's been uh, maybe troublesome in some respects. How troublesome? Today is it's mid-May. It's late May. It's late May. Not even two months into the season. Let's go back to two of the most famous seasons in the Chicago Cubs of our lifetime, right? 2015, 2016. In 2015, the Chicago Cubs used 10 starting pitchers. In 2016, the Chicago Cubs used 11 starting pitchers. In 2022, the Chicago Cubs have used nine starting pitchers. We're gonna blow those fucking red. We're gonna blow those numbers out the window, door. What's worse? To the window. Do not put balls on the screen screen. Thank you. Um, 
That's a lot of starting pitchers so far in the year. Now you might say, hey, that's just the way the game is now. Guys don't go as deep. Those were special teams. Listen, I get those pitchers on those teams were better. They had better stuff. They're just simply better pitchers. But the mere fact of the matter is the consistency game to game, what, what can you possibly expect from the starting pitching staff? And let's get even weirder. The Chicago Cubs in 2016 only had six starting pitchers that started multiple games. I'm going to say that again because this is kind of where we're getting into numbers here. Six starting pitchers in 2016 that started multiple games, meaning at least two starts. The Chicago Cubs in 2022 have had seven. How about that? More pitchers this year. Oof, I can go on a fucking, I could go on a big tangent. We will, but I'd rather go on a road trip. Let's go. You want to go on a road trip? Let's get out of my dad's garage. Let's go. We're going on a trip. Vacation Carl in the house. Welcome to Cincinnati. I'm your tour guide for today. No, we're not doing tour guides. I've actually never been to Cincinnati. Have you? Is anybody in this audience ever? No one has been to Cincinnati. I have no insight into Cincinnati. What I'm running give a fuck. Cubs are here for a four game stretch. I'm just here to reiterate, guys, we're dropping the boys off. We're going to take a couple trips here. I want to say one thing about Cincinnati. I actually think Cincinnati is underrated and I've never been there. You got a major league baseball team. You got a national football league. The traffic can't be too fucking bad here, can it? Is it? Don't think so. Okay. Check the traffic report on Cincinnati for a second while I'm doing this. Uh, the Reds stink. The Reds absolutely stink. The Cubs are going to run in 100 grain on this trip, though, and that motherfucker throws 100 miles an hour. I want to give some respect to 100 grain for a second. If you don't know who 100 grain is, you probably aren't paying attention. That's okay. Not a lot of people do. But when he pitches against the Cubs this week, be sure to tune into that. 100 grain, electric stuff. The Reds down, were they in April? Yes. Are they bouncing back? A little bit. Serious victories. This is why we have to go in there and step on their fucking throats. I'm here in Cincinnati to remind the boys, please. Dear God, how's the traffic? Not bad. Perfect. Good. Cincinnati. Let's get the fuck out of here. We're going out west. We are going to, drum roll please. Let's get on the jet. We're going to Corvallis, Oregon. What? Why the fuck am I in Oregon State's campus? I got to talk to, to who? Pat Casey, Hall of Fame, three-time NCAA championship coach. And why are we talking to him? I have to figure out what the fuck happened to Nick Madrigal's talent. I know he's out. I know he's hurt, whatever, this and that. Sore back, sore arms, sore this, sore heels. Sore heels? Just slipped out, but maybe he's got sore heels. I don't know, but he's not been impressive, and we got to figure it out because this guy coming out of college was supposed to be can't miss prospect. I know people said the White Sox reached the top five, but what the fuck is going on out here? Anybody? Pat? Danny? You want to keep going somewhere? If anybody knows what happened to Nick Madrigal, anybody here at Corvallis, Oregon, let's keep going. We're going out west. Let's go to Japan for a second. Take me to Sei Suzuki's home baseball stadium. Perfect. We are looking for any of these fucking players. If he has any teammates, any, any competitors in that league, anybody at all who's even remotely as good as Sei Suzuki, please, 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 dear God. We want to keep traveling. Do you like this segment? I like to travel. Okay. Where do you want to go? Well, stay west. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. Do you know they film the Lord of the Rings movies there? Yes. On location for like three years. Now, people say, arduous experience, filming in New Zealand, you're traveling, you're riding horses, you're learning archery and all this stuff. What people don't realize is three years in New Zealand for work sounds fucking lovely. That's a good reason. Everybody's always looking for an excuse to go to New Zealand too. And they don't want to go because it takes a long time to get to New Zealand. So you got to go there for a long time. You can't just go to New Zealand for a couple of days. You got to go to Australia, then you got to travel to New Zealand. You got to make the whole thing. Now I'm not saying you have to go from Australia to New Zealand. I'm just saying that is kind of part of the experience, I think, generally. I could be completely wrong. I could have just offended a ton of people, and that is not my intention. My point is simply this. You cannot casually go to New Zealand. You can't. You got to be all in on a New Zealand trip. I one time worked with a guy who got hired and then instantly was like, hey, I know I just got hired, but I'm taking my honeymoon. It's a four-week trip to New Zealand. And it was a hard position to fill, so he can't do anything. And he waited till he started the job. And then he went to New Zealand for like four weeks, and they... I think he came back. Yeah, he left a couple months after that. But I always respected that guy for getting a paid honeymoon to New Zealand right away. Uh, and he sandbagged the company in doing that. Great fucking move. I like New Zealand. If you had to film a film anywhere on location for three years, I like New Zealand. And that's my take on New Zealand. How'd I do? That was pretty good. Was that better than you thought? Yeah. Okay. I gotta take a deep breath. I'm so worked up, man. I really am. We gotta go. Let's go to uh uh uh. Fuck it. Let's go to somewhere relaxing. Where do you want to go? Bora Bora. 
Bora Bora. I like Bora Bora. The huts. Have you mean like music and shit? I wore the fucking straw hat for a reason. Listen, who's Bora Bora? I'll tell you who's in Bora Bora right now. I'll tell you who's on fucking vacation. Marcus Stroman. Hey, buddy, I know you're hurt, but like, come on, pal. You're getting 25 million. You're getting 25 million. Get in the car. We're going back to Wrigley Field, Marcus. Get in the fucking car. I can't say that. I don't mean that. I don't mean it like that. I mean, just like, come on, dude. We got to go. We're going back to Wrigley Field. And why are we going back to Wrigley Field? Let's do a little stature review. Congratulations to Fergie Jenkins. This was huge news up and down Clark Street all throughout the weekend. A stature reveal. And when we have a stature reveal, cut two. It only means one thing. It's time to go review the statue. We're here, Gallagher Way at Wrigley Field, uh, checking out the new statue. It's Fergie Jenkins. This is the this is the fourth statue to an amazing collection with Sano, uh, obviously Ernie Banks, Billy Williams. I love a statue. Come with me for a second. You got the National Baseball Hall of Fame plaque inscription. Okay, this is Hall of Famers only. Canada's first Hall of Famer, 284, 226. I'm not going to read the whole inscription off. It's here, though, guys. We like that. This is, I think this is marble. It's, it's a hard stone. It could be marble. It could be granite. Uh, when you and when you want a st like a statue, put a statue in. You want detail, okay? I'm going to show you detail. Stir up detail. This isn't his exact shoe size, but it is, to my understanding, to scale. This is all the scale, so it's a, it's bigger than Fergie Jenkins, but this is all proportionate. You can see the clear power position here. The hamstrings are engaged, so they're actually sculpting in an activated lower half, which, as a pitcher myself, you'd like to see that stuff. Uh, number 31, one of the all-time greats, guys. You know, he's, he's staying close. This is a great power position from Fergie Jenkins. And then look at that, you could just see the expression on his face. This is a guy who threw a ton of complete games. That's a look of a man who's like, Yo, I'm going for nine innings today. You're not taking the ball from me. It's an, it's an, honestly, it's an amazing statue. Uh, you know, is it as good as the Ron Santa one? If you know me, nothing's as good as the Ron Santa one, but. Uh, and the torque, last thing, I'm sorry, I know we should cut you loose. This is a long statue review. It's just the, the torque there. You see the jerseys turned in. That's because he's ready to fire 97 from here. You get the torque. Belly button here, golfers, everybody knows it's a good athletic position. The hair's a nice touch. You can tell a little, little curl coming out the back. The trapeze club, classic staple for Bernie Jacobs. And just a check, guys. I wanted to check the pitch grip. It looks like he's holding, I mean, it's, it looks like he's holding a split. He's got the big hands, it's deep in there, which I think is interesting. You could go four seam fastball, you could go slider. It looks like, it looks like a split. It looks like a split, could be a two seam. That's the detail you're looking for. This is a stature review. Uh, stay safe for the firefighters. That always gets me worked, that always gets me a little anxious. But, uh, yeah, Gallagher, it's a gorgeous day. I wish we were playing baseball. A little windy, but back to you guys, Bleacher Bum TV. Back to me. Back to me. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful piece of metal there. I love a sculpture. Obviously, Fergie Jenkins, legendary guy. He's just swinging a little bit, too. People forgot he had 13 home runs. You know who else had 13 home runs? Now I'm blanking on his fucking name. Fuck it, I'll just say Steve Carlton. Steve Carlton, I know he used to pop a little bit. Guys, this is Bleacher Bum TV. This is episode eight. The next six games are seriously important. They are. Because if we can claw and scratch our way to 500, mess around in June when the weather starts flying and the ball's popping and everybody's grooving, you know, give us a chance to get the starting pitching cooking. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it never comes. But the bullpen's all right. This team could be okay. Big six-game stretch. We'll see you next week. Hey, how you doing?